back to Big Fish Side Dish, the companion piece to Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. And this is the very special version of Big Fish Side Dish. Let's see how many possible memes within a meme within a show we can have. This is the fretful Laowai edition, which can only mean one thing. I'm here with who? Kevin Geiger. Geiger. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing, man? How you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm better now. I'm better now, buddy. <laughs> so you know the rules. No editing. One microphone, two uh, two pickup points, no editing. And yeah, man, we're going to talk about a lot, a lot of stuff. Cool. Bring yeah. it. There's a lot of stuff has gone on since we've last seen each other. There, there is, there is a lot of things. There are a lot of things to talk about. I'm gonna try to remember the English language. That'll be helpful. Oh, I know. That'll be helpful for an English language <laughs> podcast. I'll try to speak well, not in Pig Latin. How about that? Well, and I mean, ironically, you've been in uh, uh, the U.S. for a little bit. Uh, for a minute, yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about my trip. We'll talk about uh, the midterm elections. The oh my god, all the things happening, um, and and the event that happened the first morning I woke up, which was Stanley's passing. We'll talk yeah. about all these things in a little bit. Uh, and you've had some things going on in your life as well. I understand we're on the home front. Yeah. Um, you know, China's always full of surprises uh, professionally, personally. And uh, we had an unfortunate one. Uh, it wasn't unexpected. We knew it was coming. But, you know, anytime something like this does happen, it's it's always kind of a shock is uh, our, our cat passed away. I'm sorry and, to hear that. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I, it's funny. I say our cat um, my wife, uh, when it's been her cat for 16 years. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. This curry has been around longer than any of us. So I actually was horribly allergic to cats. So okay. when I, when I first came over and I first kind of moved in, I got over that allergy as quickly as I, <laughs> as and, I could. And now how do you do get out of the allergy? Do you what, like you special medicine? You just or? love your wife so much that you don't want to be kicked <laughs> out of you, the house. <laughs> <laughs> to tell your body, do not sneeze, do not sneeze. That, does that work? Did, did you actually take any special drugs or I, any I kind of a? It did just, you take some dander and like shove it in your nose to like sort of like immunize yourself somehow? I think like get it, some cat fur. The same with, like, they say that children when they're exposed to pets uh, develop can develop a resistance to allergies if they have right. that exposure early right. on. And there's some debate about this, but I I subscribe to it. Um, that I think just being around them enough, it doesn't work for all al- allergies, but in this case. Uh, you know, um, my wife pretty much made it clear. Look, it's you or the cat. Wow. So, uh, it's pretty gangster. It actually Go. wasn't me or the cat. It's, it's, it's me, right? If she has to choose between one of the two, it's like, I'm out. So, uh, <laughs> Um, she never put wow. that final point on it again. That wouldn't be Chinese style. But she style. didn't really have to. No, she didn't have to. It was, yeah, it was pretty it was clear. Pretty understood. Yeah. The cat kind of had that uh, that aura about. Did it. that cat have that swagger? Like you know, this curry. Yeah. Curry was the dumb cat. Oh, my wife had two cats. Those are often adorable, though. Adorable and long lived. So there you go. because they're too stupid to worry about much, so they don't stress. <laughs> Cats are kind of low stress anyway. I was gonna say I haven't seen I haven't seen too many cats like biting their nails in the corner. No, no. But she had a smarter cat named Snowball, who was just a super intelligent feline terror, right? Mm. Um, a cat who would be <laughs> jealous of people and actually enact you know punishments and, and really? revenge. And so, yes, oh, okay. And that cat lived to twelve, which isn't isn't bad. Sure. Um, passed away before our first daughter Claire was born, which I think is good because Claire and the cat I don't see them getting along too well. Um, the, mostly the, from the, the, the previous the, the previous one. But Curry just, uh, I don't think he was happy about the string of humans showing up like, okay, this guy's not leaving. And what, there's another small one and now there's an even oh. smaller one. What's yeah. going on? But he was cool with it, right? He was down. And um, so by what, age. Was he like a loving dumb cat or was he? He was. Okay. He, he was, uh, my wife was, you know, he's like so, so dumb he's smart, right? He um, was just like the example of how you want to live your life. Kind of like the Forrest Gump of cats. The Forrest Gump of cats, exactly. That's, uh, you know, life is like a box of cat litter or there something like that. There you go. Maybe that doesn't work so uh, well. That's okay. Um, like but catnip or. Uh... Yeah, he, he was a good guy. And um, <laughs> so one evening, it was about 10 o'clock. Uh, I don't know if there's a good time for this sort of thing to happen, but uh, I, I went in and he, he had been getting this this previous week thinner and thinner and just like something was just, you could yeah, tell something, something was, was imminent oh. and for no apparent reason other than age. And then he was just lying there and, and he was he was clearly gone, right? I, oh. I touched him to see and he, he definitely was gone. Stiff kitty. Yeah. And I, I uh, um, had the, you know, to tell my wife first, which is like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of a rip the bandaid off fast kind of guy. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's kind try of to be as sensitive about that as I could. And, I can and, see, I, I see you as the caring, nurturing type. I, I mean, I, I, I tried to, to split the difference. That's sarcasm, by the way. It, yeah. <laughs> 
have my moments, Brendan. I know you do. I'm sorry. Please continue your <laughs> but, sad, um, tragic story. Yeah, it's not, not so sad. This is so sad. sad. I'm trying really, to make it a little But, um, uh, um, and she handled it pretty well, uh, finding out. But then it's like Claire was, was still at 10 o'clock at night watching TV in the, in the next room because we couldn't get her to bed. And it's like, should we tell her? And, and we figured out a way to kind of break this to her. So we didn't want to show her. Yeah, give her a good nightmare before bed. Uh, well, this, you know, we're thinking about this and I thought, okay, it's a good lesson about life and death, the circle of life. Um, but you know, like with most things as a, as a parent, we yeah. kind of like pregame at first, like, should we do this sure, or that? Sure. And then go in as a unified, uh, uh, front. And so we, we wrapped Curry up and we Honey, had him in a blanket. Honey, bad news. Daddy did it. Yes. <laughs> I'm just not being sensitive. I am very sensitive. I love cats. So please continue. We told her that, uh, you know, Curry was gone. And she's like, what do you mean gone? I said, well, he's, he's, he's died. He's passed away. And she's like, where is he? And he's always in the next room. And she's like, can I see him? And we had him wrapped up in a blanket and he was there and we had a candle and, and some Buddhist music playing that was my sister-in-law sent very quickly. Cause my wife was WeChatting her very fast cause she knew the cat from, you know, uh, ages ago. And, so you uh, had like the cats like laying in state with in state, yeah, laying wow. in state in our apartment, That's basically. Impressive. And um, then we were like, okay, what do what do we do about the cat? And you know, pet disposal in the U.S. There are certain procedures you can go through. Yeah, you often you often like there are processes. You, you often if you have a yard, like you might bury it in the backyard. Right. If you have a family home or something like yeah. that. But it's which we don't a little, little, little different if you're an apartment dweller in the states, and then. I'm not going to spoil your story because you told me this. And Okay, yeah, I'll yeah, get to yeah, the part yeah, yeah. that I told you already. Yeah, yeah, No, you take your time. This is, <laughs> this is entertaining already. But um, the, uh, um, the, the pet store, not the pet store, but the, the uh, veterinarian the pet, the pet near, near our uh, apartment said, you know, we don't, we don't deal with pet disposal. There's another place, but it was rather far away. And, and like anything in China, it turns out that you can get, you know, a pet disposal taken care of door to door. So uh, my wife found a mobile cremation service that we, we called them. Uh, they, they arrived. It was this large truck. Wow. That it was sort of like a combination between like a hybrid of a hearse and a taco truck. It looked like <laughs> with like an easy um, bake oven. In the it, back. it was just this, and it was this this uh, black, shiny, huge um, huh. cube almost. And uh, they were in the parking lot, and the the guy showed up. And I have to say. I was really impressed because you don't know what to expect in terms of like customer service, uh, mm. like like the demeanor, oh, like, like, like bedside manner. Yeah, kind of bedside stuff. manner yeah. is that, you know is this like calling the plumber over? A very nice, gentle, tall Chinese guy uh-huh. uh, with a, a box of stuff that came, and he was he was very like he just had empathy oozing off. Oh, of that's him. awesome! And he met us that's in the awesome. lobby, and we came down with the cat uh, in the uh, the blanket, and, and we had uh, Claire with us. Our, oh. My three-year-old, and then also Emma, who's our our nine-month-old, because we can't leave her up in the house. You know, sure. we all wanted to go together, so we we went outside. We took the cat, um, and this is like the middle of the night. Or? In the middle of the night, it's like okay. like you know ten ten thirty. Wow! And so we go out and uh, to the truck, and inside he opens it up, and it's there are lights, and there's candles and incense, oh. and a table, and so he he brought the cat out, and he uh, washed and brushed and, and oh, took man. care of it, put it in a little box. Um, there was uh, some prayer that was said, and uh, Claire is sitting there watching the whole thing. So my three-year-old daughter is on a, a bench inside the truck, okay. just watching, watching, watching. And they have this set up for this reason, yeah, to yeah. Like make the transition easier. Yeah, to make the transition stuff. easier. That's really great. And she's just like, her eyes are huge. She's just absorbing all of it. And then uh, uh, she said, uh, Daddy Curry is, is dead? And I said, uh, uh, yeah. And, and she said, well, uh, where does he go? He go and I said, "Well, I said I don't know. Some people think they know, but I don't know." I said, "But I think he goes somewhere." I said, "You become something else," um, and uh, and then she got really quiet and she said, uh, "Am I gonna die?" And I was like, as a father, I was just like, wow. "Oh man!" It was like, "Okay, here we go." Right, right? you know, real life coming she's in. She's three. And wow. I said, "I said, well, I, I, maybe I felt as soon as these words came out of my mouth, I thought, oh no.' I said, "Well, everybody dies." And as soon as I said that, I was thinking because she's going to extrapolate yeah, to me and, and mom, mommy and, yeah. and daddy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I said, "Well, everybody dies, and everybody moves on." And I said, "It's it's just a natural part of of life." And um, and she was just really quiet, and she didn't ask the mommy daddy question. Okay. Um, and then they continued to take care of the cat and they, they closed the coffin and they said, okay, we'll, uh, we'll take care of the process and, and come back with the, with the urn. Yeah. And then, uh, poor Claire, she, she, uh, gave, uh, my wife a hug and then just 
burst into tears, yeah. just bawling. Because oh. she really loved that cat. And it was like, it broke my heart. But it was like, at the same time, I think good that she kind of, you know, saw that and understood. Yeah, it wasn't totally. like the cat just disappeared. It's better that the cat didn't just disappear while she's asleep. And no. then what happened? Because then it'd be like, she'd be looking for the cat for... Exactly. Metaphorically, um, forever. And then... 45 minutes later, they came back. Uh, they called my wife down. They had the uh, an urn. Yeah. Uh, and they asked us to, to text them a photo. So there was a photo on a wrapper on the urn. I mean, it was very tastefully wow. done. Wow. And they gave that to us. So I set that up in the uh, area where the cat used to hang out. Uh, we have like a little uh-huh. plant garden area inside the apartment. And so the next morning, um, my daughter got up and she said, Where's Curry? Is he is he still dead? And I said, Aww. I said Aww. yes, he's he's still dead. He's but really dead. I now. said, but he, I can show you where his body is, where where you know um, we don't his spirit's gone. But and so she said okay, and I showed her the bottle. She is, this thing, like, is this thing well sealed? Yeah, and okay. but I mean, she's like, he's in there. I said, yeah, you see. She's not picture? gonna try to open it. And... No, no. She and I said, do you want to do you want to say uh, thank you to him for being a good Aww. cat? And she's like, yeah. And so she's like, thank you, Curry. And that was really sweet. And uh, Aww. Um, so that was, uh, we've probably lost all of our listeners now with this cat That's story, okay. Yeah, I'm sitting here like a, <laughs> trying to hold back a tear. But that was, the, that was comments. the big personal thing for this, you know, this month was just the cat passing away, the circle of life exposure mm-hmm. to that my you know toddler had and just starting to have those conversations. And I mean, those are the beginning of many, I think, as a father with, uh, with the kids in terms of just real life stuff. Well, that's pretty uh, heavy. In pretty some heavy. Ways, well, uh, that's why we came up with Fretful Outlaw because I, I took it kind of dark after a pretty straight away, and you you followed in kind with the last time. Well, it's an interesting story, and I don't know if this is a number you want to disclose on air, but I, roughly, what would you say the range of that service? I'm just curious. What it was sort of about. Cost. It was under a thousand RMB. Really? Okay. And it's I, pretty reasonable. I, I'm glad you asked the question because the one thing I forgot to mention is that um, it really demonstrated to me the evolution of pet culture and pet ownership in china yeah that there's a service you can use your like a, a an service app for like this that it was it was sensitive and sort of like progressive in terms of the guy yeah. just understanding exactly. that this is a grieving moment and you need time exactly. to be able to process it um and, wow. and tastefully done uh and he even said uh because my wife said, oh we, we haven't seen this kind of truck before and he said oh i do a lot of business in this area uh because this is in Shuangjing, and a so lot of, a lot of there are many foreigners there pets, but yeah. also there are many upscale chinese uh right middle class upscale chinese who have pets and they don't just want to uh you know, yeah. dispose of them sure. and you don't really have a yard like exactly. when I was a kid, you mentioned the backyard right. all of we my previous really pets here. went into the the backyard yeah. you know we buried them directly so um yeah. Anyway, wow. it's uh, it shows. Uh, you know, China really is is. I guess the theme of all of your uh, shows is how much China is is changing and evolving. Mm-hmm. That's always the subtext. Yeah. And this was another area where I saw that. Well, that's true. That's that's a great one to start with, I think. And uh, yeah, to, you know, hi, shout out to the five people still listening. Um, <laughs> but uh, I meant but, to uh, make that like, story shorter than <laughs> that's okay. Well, it's you know, it's it's all right. It's uh, thirteen minutes. You know, it's good. Um, so. What should we pivot to? I mean, so well, there let's pivot was... to you know, um, you had a pretty swank photo of yourself in a oh. lovely chateau in L.A. during oh, your trip, was... and I was like, man, living the life, sweet. Dude. Well, you know, it's what do you say? It's uh, yeah, there, we had we had a dinner meeting at the uh, well, not dinner, we had drinks post dinner at the Chateau Marmont uh, by the piano bar, which is one of my favorite places uh but yeah we were staying in a lovely little airbnb in atwater village and like you said it only matters where the photo is taken <laughs> only matters where the photos are yeah taken. we're staying in an airbnb with dirty carpet and <laughs> like a two second floor walk up but um but yeah so the cat is semi out of the bag and i just realized that that wasn't trying to be, no no that's okay. that was an accidental uh callback just, yeah, just that, that wasn't it. the cat's out of the bag and in the urn <laughs> sorry it's too soon no um, no not, it's, it's but fine. uh <laughs> and it's, again i love cats i love cats i love cats so I'm not being insensitive. I'm just, main, I'm, I'm just know, wired this way. Humor, humor is a part of life. It is and, a coping uh, skill. It is. Well, my, it, my, my cat, Putty Tat, was like my my. Did you best actually friend. name your cat Putty Tat? How old were you? Like three? Uh, I was young enough that it was allowed. I <laughs> okay. forget. The, yeah, I was old enough that you wouldn't <laughs> oh, judge. Almost like in your 30s. No, you, no, yeah, yeah, it was last week, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't don't judge, man. Um, but uh, no, I was I was like single digits. Or I was like eight or nine when I got the cat. And that, and that cat rocked along for for a while, for a good long while. And uh, I think uh, kind of we moved to an area where there was like a wilderness area. Yes, we've gone back to cats, listeners. Um, there, there, there's, <laughs> no, uh, no we're, I'll, I'll wrap it up. 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 But, but moved to a place that was, that was, 
kind of semi in the country. And she was uh, she became sort of an indoor outdoor cat. And and bottom line is that we we think you know Mother Nature for circle of life she she became the food for something probably you know well an outdoor cats live I think on average two years is that it yeah two years and cats can live up to twenty or so well she had been uh, she had been like a hell of a, like a mouser a birder whatever you call it I mean yeah. she she was the she was the apex predator of of the scene but you're Every, out there everywhere the we live so but like we moved to a place that probably had I mean, cars it was before or... coyotes had spread to like the southern u.s like there are coyotes, coyotes in every state now did you know that but um really yeah yeah even alaska coyote well okay every Hawaii? continental all right <laughs> point point taken uh but uh continental u.s okay um so i uh, <laughs> appreciate the clarification um just curious but yeah so so we'll move off of cats but but back back to the trip. coyotes that, cats to coyotes exactly well speaking of los angeles so uh so yeah the the cat being out of the bag about the trip a bit um i'm won't, won't, let's not drill down into the details of this but just to say that um We'll get into the trip, but not the details of the, of the project. But right. um, you don't want to violate I, I, any NDAs. I, well, I don't want to think the magic. You know, once the genie's out of the bottle, it's like I just don't want to. You can't. Put I, it back I don't in. like. Well, you look. You know what? What's you know the biggest sport? Well, the biggest sport in Hollywood is talking about things before they've happened. Yeah, and I just don't. It's just not good. That's a growing it, sport in China too. Actually, it's, it's, it's probably <laughs> unique to no place at this point. It's probably <laughs> common everywhere. But so, point is, I was back in the states. There's a feature that I'm helping develop with a writer, first time director friend, and we're making a short to prove him for like bigger talent right. that would be in the feature. You know, so it's Get proof your attachments in line. And yeah, you you know, you're, you're from Hollywood. You know these things. So, um, so we're there for that. So we're going to shoot the short, and, and because because of the holidays coming up in December. And you know Hollywood kind of rolling its sidewalks up, kind of early mid December. We need he, director wants rehearsal time, so we need to get the casting done now for the short. We're going to shoot mid January. So, um, so what's interesting for me was that I mean there are a lot of things in the background going on. We just had the U.S. you know the midterm elections, of course, happened just before I went, uh, which is another topic. But you know, and, and as well as like the mass shootings, which are never ending, and the wildfires in California. I came in uh, in the afternoon. And out the I was was there any visibility when is, you, were coming? Is, is Did you left, see the fires is the... left port and right is starboard is that how that yes. works so I was on the port side of the plane I'll see but I was able to see out the window because it was like mid early mid afternoon it was like two thirty three when yeah. we were coming and we came down we did the thing where you I mean you know this trip because you've done the street so many times but basically the flight from Beijing to L A typically you kind of you come around I won't do the whole thing but basically approaching. California, approaching Cal- you Los come Angeles, down the coast. you come down the coast, yeah, and you're sort of either over the desert for a minute, you're over the water for a minute, right. I mean, you know, a minute being an hour or two, but then you, as you <laughs> sort of on approach to LAX, you are typically just off the coast uh, or just right above some mountains, depending on which flight path you're on, but but I, just the smoke, it was crazy, I'm like, holy crap, this is like worse than Beijing, I mean, and yeah. Beijing's like fine right now, but like a polluted Beijing day it looked like a, it, it looked like about a 350 AQI day. People were walking around. I think I think officially it actually was the most polluted city in the world uh, for a brief period of it, time. It, it was, yeah. you know, India, China. It was like the winner or the loser. It was. I saw that. I My saw that friends had them. They actually were contacting me saying, "Kevin, what kind of mask do you buy when you're in Beijing? We'll just go that. to Seven Eleven and get you an AQ Blue." Yeah. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, what's that? One of my friends said he was driving around with his uh, passport, his birth certificate, his marriage license, and his diploma at all times. And I said, man, welcome to my life in China. Oh, exactly. <laughs> That's like, how I roll. It's like, what, are you, are you going to the store for some toilet paper? <laughs> you, oh, no, you're fleeing your, your life to be destroyed. So so it was an interesting time. Um, you know, a few, a few key points for me were that... Um, and I kind of talked a bit this about a bit about this on the previous uh, side dish, which I put out actually over the weekend, where I kind of rambling about my trip, so I won't do it too much now, uh, in case anyone listens to more than one of these. But um, you know, it, it was an interesting thing for me because I had said, look, I mean, L.A. is is my spiritual home, right? In 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 the U.S. and um, as much as I love it, I mean, I, I moved to China for a reason. I moved here right. to do a bunch of stuff, had some really specific big goals and plans. And and that's a bigger topic to, that I'm going to get to as we talk about China stuff here for in the last part of our, of our show today, yeah. But uh, which we're a, a long way from, just so you know. <laughs> Strap in, folks. Get another 40 minutes of this. Um, but, uh, but anyway, in terms of L.A., the interesting thing for me is I – 
you know, because I have to make these visa trips. Or I have the, every 60 days I've got to do an exit. I can go anywhere. Right? I've been to Inter Mongolia. I've been to Mongolia right. like nine times. I've been to Hong Kong 10 times. Yeah, Hong Kong's a popular. Love Hong Kong. Spot. You know, I've been to a few other places, but have not been back to the States since uh, two th- in two years. So um, I went to the American film market in 2016, which also happened to be the election week. And so I was in. I was staying at the Beverly Hilton, not to name drop. In the midst of all, I was staying there when all that happened. They had a big after party plan for you know Hillary victory, (laughs) and I went off to dinner at friend's house, and I came back, and we were we had a rule of no phones during the results, uh, as we saw which way because on the way over there it was becoming clear how I was heading, and we said you know what we want to have a nice dinner, and so we like no phones. Say clear of how it was heading. Do you mean? Towards Hillary or towards? No, it was clear by then. It was clear. It was clear by like four thirty-five in the afternoon, LA time, which the, right. we had these because there was a results. tipping point. I remember where. We, like, oh wait a minute! It it it, 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 it done tipped. It was nothing was official, but we're like, oh, this is not going yeah. the way people thought it was. And so I can't. When I came back to the hotel at night, um, they were all. I mean, and they, you know, it was Beverly Hilton, like the the ballroom. I wasn't going to go to this. I wasn't invited to this. I didn't want a ticket or whatever. But you know, super fancy with the, with the registration and it's just decorated to the nines, and all these lovely dressed people. As I was leaving to get into my lift to go to my friend's dinner, then all, all these people were starting to come in, right? And all so happy and bubbly. And I came back, and it just it was like they're all well, you're all wearing black, so it's a, <laughs> you know, it, a mournful. It, like, it went from it went from a party to a funeral, experience. right? Uh, it's very miserable. But um, but more to the point of this sh- of this show, I guess, is that. I had said that I didn't want to go back, not not because of that, although that's maybe a trite, you know, I could make a funny about that, I guess. But the reality is that because of the whole reason to move in here for me, I didn't want to go back unless I was brought back for work. Right. That's the thing. I mean, I have tons of friends. I love it. Right. But at the same time, you know, just you're kind in China of, for a it's a point of pride. Yeah. I, if I go back, I want to be brought back on somebody's dime, even right. if it literally is the the one dime plan. To <laughs> to to no, if it's to my buddy, he's you know we we had a great time, lovely dinner and drinks, and I didn't feel like you know that we skimped other than the Airbnb, but which which was fine, which was totally fine. Uh, but but so being brought back for work is like oh okay, being brought back to actually produce a film project, cool. Right. This, this and is, then you're this Brendan is the from right Beijing, relationship. Right? Yeah, this is the right. This is the right. Uh, um, I just realized I quoted Spalding Gray. It's a long story. That's, awesome. a, that's a tangent of a tangent. Is that the first tangent. time you've ever quoted Spalding Gray on the show? It's not the first time I quoted Spalding Gray today. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is. It is, and it is. I think. Um, yeah. To the three of you, hi. Thanks for listening. So. Um, Interesting for me that um, – Inging, can you type just a little bit quieter, please? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Are you, you going to out her now? Since? Hi, Inging. Oh, yeah, Inging's listening to us. Hi, she- hello, hola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's, you're still a nice person, like we said. Uh, th- there was a director I worked with. Yeah, this is Tan. I'll come back. There's a director I worked with who – Really funny guy. Actually, Peter DeLuise. He had been an actor forever, and then he became a director, and he had the best style. Whenever he had to give somebody a note, it was maybe a hard note. Yep. He came up to him and tell him, he said, so look, um, so that wasn't really very good. I don't think that I bought you when you looked at this. I don't feel like you were thinking, but but you're still a nice person. <laughs> 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 he would give the really hard. He would give. So he the, gave the sugar after. The, he uh, gave the he gave the spice and then the sugar. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Peter, who I'm sure is not listening. But um, so being back in the states, and I wake up the first morning there, and I have this ritual where I and I've just I've had this for years now, where I don't look at my phone right away, other than to turn off like the clocks, which That's I can good. pretty much do by feel. But because time difference, because because because. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes once in a while I'll glance, like I'll kind of out of the corner of my crusty eye, I'll kind of glance and right. I'll just spin the the notifications mm-hmm. to see if there's like five missed calls. You know, if see right. there's old shit is something blowing up that right. I need to right. attention to. Cool. But I don't want to like read details. I right. don't want first thing in my brain before I've gotten my feet on the ground to be bummer news in my brain. I don't right. need to start the day like that. Many uh, people do now, though. I, I, well, those people are stupid. So, 
<laughs> Sorry. I concur. Yeah. So, um, and no offense to all my friends, I just called stupid. Yes. But, but so, uh, I'm special. I get up and do yoga. That's where I'm going with this. So I get up and I, sometimes I flatter myself that I do yoga, which is fat guy stretching, um, for a minute. It's not really yoga esque. We wouldn't want a photo. We wouldn't want yeah. to see, uh, you call it like Foga, right? Uh, oh, Foga. I like that. Foga. We coined a new phrase right here, Kevin. High five. There we go. But no, I, I get up and I do some meditation stuff. And so, uh, so the thing is, though, so I glance, I did that little like sideways glance at the mm-hmm. notifications, just see if there's like, right. you know, a bunch of one thing is, oh crap, this yeah. is blowing up. Uh, Stan Lee died. Mm-hmm. It's like every one of my news outlets sending me notification that Stan Lee had just died three minutes earlier. It just happened. Right. And they're blowing up. And, and I had the same thing in Beijing, like 17, it wasn't three minutes, but 17 minutes after it happened, uh, one of my Chinese friends posted. Uh, that he had passed on, and it, it was that, it was that quick, just just amazing. Yeah, and, spreading. And, and you know, and I didn't. I literally, I I met him, worked with him one time on this TV show that I produced actually for Chinese television in Los Angeles. Um, really lovely guy, and you know, our office dealt with him and his reps for a few yeah. weeks. But you know, we we spent like basically three four hours together. Could not have been a more gracious guy, lovely guy, and you know, complicated legacy and this and that. Sure. You know, Jack Kirby's family would have some things to say. And Steve bottom, Ditko. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. But bottom line is, uh, different time, right? I mean, it's like judging, you know, judging Henry the Eighth. Well, wait, okay, what is who are you to judge? He was the king. It was back in the day. Vanity Fair you had know? a great piece where they basically was like, one, yeah, genius uh, or bookmark. huckster, and they were like both. I, I've got that one. I've literally got that open. I've got to close now because we're recording, but I've, I've got that open on my. On yeah. my web browser to, to read. Very balanced and fair, I think, and, and quite insightful. Well, so so I know this is don't want this to be the Brendan Free Associating about California story, but I thought crazy thing. Here's the thing. So thanks to there's this blue Facebook, uh, this this blue social network called Facebook, right uh, outside of China, and um, yeah, I know we all know that's <laughs> like a joke, only smaller and less funny. So. The thing is, we have that lovely feature, as many problems as they have with it, the one thing that is sometimes good, it could also be a knife in the heart if it's like, oh, that's my ex-girlfriend, or oh, that's, you know, this business relationship that went to crap. Uh, Usually, it's good news. It's like, today on this day, your memories. Right. Uh, Okay, so woke up, blah, blah, Stanley News. Did all my morning routine, did this, that, and the other, and I'm checking Facebook, and and by the way, like, all my stuff, I kept turning on my VPN. (laughs) <laughs> I kept turning on my VPN. It, right? Just could and nothing was working because it's the inverse. And actually, and it's yeah, yeah. And so, so, um, so when I check Facebook, your memories five years ago that day is the day that I met Stan. Oh, that's the photo. And it's that all you the, had. well. That's that photo, and I've got. I mean, there's we had we had two professional wow. photographers. I, there's actually about a hundred photos of me that's and Stan, crazy. and me and Stan and different people. Yeah, that's just the one that that's the one that looks like you met him in a convention. That's actually backstage of the show that I produced. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's just to say that. So it was that five years to the day is when he died, and so that was like a crazy like closing of the circle thing for me. That's pretty. You know, brought I, back I to make him cool, brought back like, to make a movie. And like full and circle, a dovetail thing. with yeah. I mean, yeah. His, uh, uh, and the place is on fire. Well, you know? I, yeah. The, um, I mean, before we talk about the fire, because I, I do want to get back to the the fires, and, yeah. and that's that's a pretty big uh, piece of news. But uh, just one more thing about Stan Lee that I really thought was quite impressive is that uh, the resonance that he had, uh, not only with American culture and you know myself growing up as a comic geek, but right. then globally. And I was asked by uh, China Radio International to do. I don't know why they asked me, but um, uh, to to kind of eulogize him a little bit and talk about uh, who he was right. uh, in terms of his legacy, and and then more personally, like me as a person growing up, and then as a creative uh, myself, what sure. he meant to me. And um, uh, one of the things I mentioned that that really struck me here in China is how uh, you know Stanley did cameos in the comics, and then he extended those cameos to the films. Once, right, you know, right. The, the Kevin Feige successful Marvel films, not the. The pre Kevin Feige uh, disasters, like there. Howard the Duck, etc. Um, the first hall. Love Howard though. The uh, Chinese audiences would shout just, out to Leah Thompson. Yeah, just seeing, to seeing the audiences nudge each other and go, "There, there he is, there he is." Yeah, like, exactly. When they recognize him as like the bus driver or the, right. or the guy feeding the pigeons, coming. the janitor with the headphones rocking out. Exactly. Yeah. And then if they didn't see him waiting for the uh, the bumpers, you know, uh, Did, oh, he's in the, the, he's, the he's in the, the yeah. 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 So um, it was cool that there was this awareness, and and I think that many people initially didn't know who he was. It's like, oh, there's that old guy. But then, uh, as Chinese people tend to do, quickly find out, oh, 
that's the founder and or not the founder, but the the publisher of Marvel Comics, one of the creators of of many of the the seminal characters in uh, uh, Marvel history, and uh, that when he passed away. WeChat was on fire yeah. with, you know, testimonials, even if just a photo, right, of, of yeah. people who felt some kind of connection with well, Totally. Guy. Well, and, and, you know, I had changed um, my uh, – I changed my profile picture to, to the that one of me and Stan and just to kind of a nice memories, like bittersweet kind of a thing. Yeah. And I'll change it – I figured a week is like a good I'll, – I'll change it uh, actually uh, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, something like that. So if you're listening, you'll you'll be listening to this uh, on Friday, folks, and so I will have changed my profile picture. So I'm sure you're fascinated by that, but um, but but it's in my moments if you care to see it. And but, those specials are like a great palate cleanser because if you ever have, I don't know if you have that problem where you have the same photo for a long time and then you find yourself not looking like that anymore, and then if you oh, yeah. suddenly changes, like Gah! what happened? Oh God, no! Can- <laughs> I, I I was just showing I was showing Inging when we were having. Yeah, we get a lot of work done because I stop and say, "Hey, look at these weird pictures of me and how different I look." She's like, this is not our show. I'm like, I know, but uh, but I, a photo for a photo of me from like two years ago, and I, I I look like seven years older, and there's the picture from seven months earlier, and I look like like the progression. I, I put on about ten years in the last two and a half hmm. easily. So That's speaking China of so you, speaking man. of China, shifting <laughs> gears, uh, yeah, we had had lovely stuff, and, and I did the big travel log already on side dish, so I'll spare you guys with the redundancy. So. Um, What's up? Uh, what's up in China world today? We've got a lot of things going on. There's, uh, you know, part of the things that, that I'm doing with Yinging on our new show, How China Works, is um, talking about cross cultural differences and how to bridge those gaps and stuff. And there are a lot of different things. It's funny because you have, uh, as you do, we have a fun relationship where you'll come, you'll send me some some thought. Some reflection, some commentary on something that either you saw or read that you thought I would appreciate, and sometimes I'm we're prompting this with this show. So what's what's been on your mind lately? I've, you know, I've been really enjoying the uh, How China Works series. I think that the the banter that you and uh, Yingying have and, and the information, the the info nuggets, I think you call yeah, them, yeah. are are really quite uh, charming and it really um, is fun for me to listen. And I, I've been here ten years. I'm not an expert. At, I'd be the last. You know, the longer I'm here. The the less I know right. or understand, but uh, which is usually when that's the mark say, of the oh, expert. Yeah, that's right? the mark of you're, you're becoming more Chinese. I don't understand anything anymore. But I like to kind of compare notes with my own experiences vis-a-vis um, things that that you or Yingying will say, especially what she says. And <laughs> sure, understandable. Me too. Me too. Me too. And it's been uh, when in doubt, pay attention. Uh, oh, you, she, she's right. watching. I'm not she's just budget. saying that because she's, she's sitting right she, behind me. She is. Well, she's about twelve feet away. Because I'm going to I'm going to tweak her nose a little bit later too. So I have to say something nice. Oh, because okay. you know, there, there was something else she said on one of the shows that made me think about um, a weakness that Chinese people have. Oh, so uh, I'll uh, you okay. Know, so uh, we'll hold off get, on that. Get for, there in context. The, the, yeah. Get well, yeah. The I normally when moment. in doubt I listen to her too. Um, so that's kind of how that works. But uh, one thing I wanted you talking about the questions that uh, Chinese people will ask uh, Americans. They they may ask like. Questions that might seem a little too forward or direct, but it's just a way to get to know you. You mean like how do, how much money do you make? How much and money do you married? make? Things and, like you know, that? How many kids do you have? I've you never heard that, not, except I've heard it a hundred times. Yeah, a yeah, hundred times. Um, oftentimes now, Chinese people will ask about politics. And oh, I've noticed. Especially because Chinese people can't really talk about politics. Exactly. Here. So they can talk about your own politics. So I right. talk about it. So, but you know, you can talk about American. I was politics on the one man apology tour after they elected Trump. <laughs> I was too. I mean, you know, as you know, I didn't vote for the guy. Um, and in the midterms, I was, I was true blue, but there was a, a lot of curiosity about the, the midterm elections and what that meant. Yeah. And, and yeah. people not necessarily seeing it as a good thing that now, uh, Democrats controlled half the House because, well, right. isn't this a sign of the flaw of your system because now you've got like gridlock, etc. And I was like, well, yeah, but in the absence, at least from my point of view, in the absence of a progressive agenda, uh, yeah. I'll go with gridlock. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's try to stop the Voldemort agenda. And of possible. course, I have relatives who are at the complete opposite point of view. Sure. Like, that, you know, they were in the, in the absence of a, I don't want to say regressive agenda, but I will, um, a conservative agenda. Um, or in this case, a, a psychopathic agenda, uh, they would prefer gridlock uh, as well. But there were questions about what that meant, um, the shootings. 
Yeah. That, yeah. You know, I mean, Thousand Oaks. You're talking guy. about Chinese questions. Yeah, about Chinese stuff questions about States. stuff that was going on oh, just yeah. the last couple oh, yeah. of weeks. The yeah. fires, the, yeah, the totally. shootings. Like, California was just a mess. It's like the worst parts of the Bible. It, all hitting yeah. at once, yeah, right? Exactly. And And Trump and his typical, you know, his empathetic Jesus. way, his sarcasm, could care less because California <sighs> is voting against him, you know, constantly. Um, so you could see him trying to muster some pretense of and he wasn't doing it well no. i was like oh they should be raking the forest everything would have yeah. been fine or gee thank um, thanks for your insight yeah if, every, if everything in that bar was armed then you know right so um there's a lot of curiosity from my chinese friends about this and um what i think and i i was quite honest about the fact that look um even though i'm going to talk in a minute about some things in china that drive me nuts um, those things just drive me nuts, but yeah. they're not going to kill me necessarily. Yeah, uh, yeah. But bringing my children back to America right now, I have to think very long and hard about, you know, the chance of just being randomly shot or, you know, these horrible things that are going on The, the that um, there were always killings. There were always sure. problems, but it just seems like we're reaching a whole new level of insanity um, and, and kind of combustion, literally and figuratively. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, this is why I was, you know. The aspect I didn't talk about on the previous one of these shows about my trip was like I mean I talked about reflecting and this and that and why I'm doing what I do and 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 there's a lot going on with me you know there's there are other business things and personal things at the moment that are just you know transit and flux yeah. and, and the big realization this is like the, you said earlier like the you get the sugar with the spice the mm-hmm. sugar with the medicine and same thing you know um, the upside is that. It looks like knock on, knock on wood tissue box closest wood handy because this is IKEA. <laughs> we'll call that wood. Um, knock on wood here. It it looks you know going back to at least do this short, and it looks like I'll spend probably about six weeks in LA from the beginning of the year. I'll probably fly on New Year's Day, right? And, and that's actually kind of my choice. It'll be like I the six day. deadliest weeks of the year for you, man. Well, well, actually, that's that's a good day to no arriving on New Year's Day is different because everybody's the bad people are all asleep and hungover. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and all the fun people partying. But I yeah. mean, like, I think the bad guys are taking a day off during New Year's Day. Hopefully, hopefully. But I've flown on New Year's Day twice internationally, different places, and that, not to tangent on that. But but it's it it's you have the plane to yourself. It's it's great. Are the planes it's freaking uh, great. Are they free flow on New Year's Day or no? Ah, uh, well, I've never had a problem with that because of. I've other than this trip, I flew American on this trip. I haven't flown a domestic carrier in like three. Well, I, I came, I moved here on Air Canada, so two and a half years ago, I was one way to Air Canada. But I've flown nothing but Chinese or Korean airlines, just because that's the dominant thing here right. you know, since I've been here. But anyway, I, and so on those, it's all the beer and wine you want, and yeah. I don't want that much because I'm flying in, right. a, in a cylindrical tube. But, you gotta know. watch out with blood yeah. spots in the legs and all. Exactly, that. <laughs> and you know, just just the the idea of the yeah having to get too comfortable in those bathrooms is not an issue. So anyway, <laughs> not to, not to take it in a tacky place, but um, what was it? What I was gonna say is that you know it's it's a big note for me about big reflection point for realizing okay upside getting to go back for work being brought back for work yep. and to spend some time because it was just effortless like i there were some weird things like i said i was i not kidding i was reaching for my vpn constantly right constantly because i'm so used to the rhythm here of how you got to turn it on for this we got to turn it off for that because it messes with like wechat pay and you know it's so i was constantly in that rhythm and that's still that didn't stop it's and did you slow. speak chinese to anybody uh, by accident while you were there uh, a few people like bump into somebody like well i said that way. yeah totally totally and i and i said blah, 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 blah. you know it's it's <laughs> yes yes and and measure 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 but but also my my buddy who i'm doing the project with he he lived here on and off he's lived here for 28 years on and off he lived here a total of 17 years but he lived here he's lived here back and forth for 28 years yeah. So he's a totally fluent Lao Wai, reads, writes, speaks. And one of the roles, it's a Chinese female, and then there's a middle-aged French guy they were casting mm-hmm. for. So, so yeah, we I spoke Chinese to, like, every Chinese actress who came in. We, he did it to test their fluency, and I did it to not be embarrassed. To, That's right. So they know I can speak a little bit Chinese, too. Yeah. I had to show off a little bit, too. And, and, and you know, it, that, that worked this, really well because they didn't understand me usually. Because I'm not so fluent out of it. Like, I said, ni hao. Yeah, and that, that's and like look at me funny. I'm like, you're not a real Chinese person. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The one the one thing I uh, that was unexpected reverse culture shock yeah. when I went back to the U.S. 
was that I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the uh, the vampire series True Blood that was on. Passionately familiar. Well, yes. I'm passionate. I'm so familiar. Suki Stackhouse, right? The heroine yeah, sure. who could hear people's thoughts. Yeah. And it's driving her nuts because she could hear everything exactly. everybody's thinking. <laughs> the first time I came back to LA from being in China for I was in here a couple years before I, I went back. Right. I was sitting at a Starbucks. And I could just, I realized I could understand every conversation. It was not crazy. And because here I don't. Exactly. I, it's like I pick up a, a few words. Oh, somebody said Pingwall. That's a great point. Or somebody point. said, I'm sorry, but I, I just generally. You didn't have any context. My yeah. ignorance, right? I don't, I'm not fluent enough to understand everything people are saying. And suddenly I could hear every little freaking thing. And it was driving me crazy. I had that too. <laughs> I had that too in a, a couple of moments, a few places you were in. I won't tangent on my aspect of that. But it's very really, weird, isn't it? The, it? It totally is. I'm, I'm, I'm sliding the mic further from you on the... I mean, I mean, you're doing it on purpose. I well, well, no, it's just, you know. Um, so the, the, I guess the thing I... to There's more to say, but but the thought that, that's relevant to this right now is that, you know, the... the, the this is, I mean, good and bad. The thing is, I, I'm going to get to go, you know, get to, quote unquote, go back to... For this gig, and I'm very excited about that. I mean, cool. it's it's very it's very cool. Uh, you know, it's a short film. Damn it, it's, it's gonna be a damn good one, and it's yeah. really cool. You know, um, and it's to lead to bigger things. But just this in and of itself is a really cool little project. So I'm super excited about it. Working with my buddy and helping him. It's his first. He's really good writer. And he's sold and optioned things. It's his first time directing. So I'm real excited to you know help with that aspect of sort of the mentory thing. Um, and we've got a great team already lined up. But the um, the flip side is. It's more the realization, and this is maybe for me to do a solo weepy show in December or January when I'm there, but just, you know, it's like the dream has changed here for mm-hmm. me in a major way. We kind of talked about this we a talked, bit. Yes, we did talk about this. It's changing for everybody. It, the game is changing, is. evolving, and you have to change yeah. with the time. So. It is, but realizing that, yeah, I'm probably, I mean, if I'm fortunate enough for things to go how they look to go, and also, if we get to do the movie, which is be in the fall, and that would be uh, elsewhere. That would be in France, actually, um, is where the, the movie's set. We're just faking LA, buying, buying stock footage for the exterior. Right. But it's set in, in Paris. So that all comes to pass. You know, Hopefully it does. But that means that, yeah, I'll be spending six months away from here next year. So I think it's smart. I mean, to we, we which also said, ties into that tax thing. That's a bonus for the whole tax right, residency changing thing. Tax, yeah. I was already planning to like engineer that that I'm gone. The whole thing of if you're here 183 days or more, you have to report. right. The reporting's the hassle. I mean, the money's not a big deal for me right now. It's not a big deal at all. Um, you know, you want to you want to how much of nothing? What percentage of nothing? But just the dual uh, reporting. But the, the, that the that part's the hassle. Incongruities between the timing. Et exactly. Et exactly. So. Uh, I, I know I'm all I'm all over the place even for a side. Dish. Well, no, but this is this is very uh, germane, I think, to some conversations we've had before about how you know the the media landscape, uh, the the landscape for foreigners and how they can participate. So called foreign experts has been evolving here, and and you have to change your game with this. Uh, this last year, I think almost. All of the work that I've done, I, I work freelance from home now, as you know, right? And almost all of the work has come to me from outside uh, mainland China. Okay. So I'm doing it here. Uh, my, my children go to school here. My wife is working on a VR project here right, for right. a company here in Beijing. But in terms of the work I'm doing, yeah. I could do it anywhere in the world. Exactly. And this is a good step for me to just plan for the future in which, um, I think I'll always be in China in some uh, yeah. context and to some degree, but not necessarily three, you know, 365 a year. Yeah. And I think for any foreigner, uh, I used to say that as a foreigner, you can't really adapt to China unless you just dive in and, mm-hmm. and really be here. Right. And I think that's true. But Very true. The, the end game for foreigners in China isn't what it was shaping up to be, let's say, even five years ago. It's different now. And you have to realize that the, the end game here is not really intended for you. It's intended for more for Chinese. And this is fine. Of course, of course. But, so you have to kind of engineer yeah. your own... Uh, strategy for what you consider to be success, right? Your own game, right? And then pursue that, and and not get too distracted with what people are telling you. You should hold out for or hope for, uh, but to be a little more keen eyed and realistic about that. And I think having one foot in both kingdoms is, you know, uh, good. Well, this leads us to we'll call it the last general topic, but um, the, talking a little bit more about how China works. Mm-hmm. And you've been fun to give me feedback and comment, and now you know <laughs> Ying Ying. So, so watch out, Ying Ying. You're gonna get interesting. You'll get funny 
we chats from Kevin about commenting on things. It'll be amusing though. Well, this uh, is this is even better because since we have this monthly show now, I can summarize it here. This won't be every, yeah, exactly. every so time. But, you've uh, had some really great feedback about some of the different episodes and adding your two cents worth. And 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 let me just not to be too pluggy, but let me just say, you no, know, plug away. with well, I just want to clarify for so for the the first eight weeks of how China works. It's five shows. It's daily shows, Monday through Friday, and it's a tight little info nuggets. Like we said, we really research the hell out of this, and we research, we bullet point, we script, and we work and rescript, and we and we and then we basically improv a little bit off of the scripts is the goal. So it's a lot of it's a lot of fun, but it's a whole ton of work, and so it's it's you know it's not sustainable to do that every week around the year. So we're doing this eight weeks as this crash course in China, but then it's going to go to a twice a week format. That's more conversational. It's, it's like, it's sort of, it'll be me and Ying's kind of version of this only shorter and hopefully more focused and less tangents for me. Yes. Right. Uh, so that'll be the, the sort of more of this paradigm, only a little more on point. And then we'll have special guests. And I'm already imagining you will be, we'll be featuring Kevin Geiger's wit and wisdom. So, so what are some of the things that have struck you about some of the things we should? You had some great feedback on a few things. Yeah, and but the two two episodes particularly resonated with me. Uh, one was about drinking. Go figure. <laughs> and the other was about negotiating, um, which uh, you know can be done in in tandem. And I think you know Chinese probably like it when they're negotiating with a liquored up foreigner. Sure, um, sure. But as a foreigner, you do want to keep your wits about you when you're negotiating. Uh, but uh, drinking is, of course, a big part of life here. And I remember as I was listening to your episode, um, and I can imagine, I know you can put it away, and I think Ying Ying could probably hold her own, too, in terms of... Uh, as, as a child, she uh, developed a tolerance. Of that's right. She, I remember that. She mentioned, what, 10 years old? I think old? she was reminded... Six, three? I, I, won't, I won't tell any tales out of school <laughs> about her, but I, th- I think she recently was in an engagement where she... I think she's cured of wanting to drink for a minute. Uh, I <laughs> can see that. The, but I think she could hold her liquor probably very well. Most... If she wanted to. I hate to sound sexist, most women I've found can. I think it has something to do biologically. They say that women are more uh, resistant to poisons because they are the okay. child bearers and they have the, this. This okay. sounds sexist in a complimentary way. Is, 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 um, is this kind of like, like a backhanded compliment? A something? bit. But like my wife, Wen, can, can, she doesn't like to drink too much, but if she's in those situations, but which we can... used to be in a lot here where you're at a conference and you're at a banquet and blah, blah, she could hold her own and not seem drunk, but but really be, you know, uh, keeping up with the, the big boys. I was a little different. Um, I, I made a few mistakes. One of my big mistakes was I was in Zhengzhou yeah. in the Honan province, and they said, oh, can you drink? And I said, yeah, which you should never no, say no, no, exactly. to anybody anywhere in China. Because they got to test that. But especially not there, right? Because yeah. what I can drink means it's it's a whole different level. Do they do it you, like I did the Anyang? Because they're, they're, they're near – the, is – I told you, the Anyang, they drink in threes. Yeah, exactly. And everything the same you guys were talking about, it was all oh, of that. Geez. And also, like, the fish head. Like, So there was the, the, the yeah, Lazy yeah. Susan yeah, yeah. Uh, spinning table, and there was a fish. And then every time the fish head came around and pointed to me, which it seemed to do a lot. Uh, oh, they got, oh, is that the, the cue fish, to yeah, drink? Yeah, got to drink. Uh, and, you know, and I'd have to drink three. I had to drink three. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, one for myself. Sure. For my liver, I guess. One for our <laughs> friendship, another for business. And okay. um, I... <laughs> I had a, a, my, my low point, or maybe high point, was uh, I was at a, a, a big, this was in 2008. I have to put this in context. This was before the austerity campaign in China. When did that officially kick in? I don't know when it officially was. That, I, think I mean, was the Olympics? Around 2011, 12 is when the austerity campaign kicked in. That was, was the end of the fun times. But yeah, yeah, all the fun ended. But like 2008 to 12, my Lord, um, it was the salad days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, imagine a salad made out of like, the you know, salad days. And, yeah. So, uh, yeah, indeed. And uh, I went to this uh, um, conference I helped organize. And afterwards, we had a huge banquet. And there were many officials there at different levels that I want to identify in detail. Um, sure. But from regional up to, to the top, yeah. top. Not the top, top. Well, but, but, but up higher than I was. Oh, that, that level of guys here? Cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I don't remember leaving the banquet. Okay. I just, I woke up. But yet you're here. I woke up on my bed in my, I was in this beautiful I lived this weird life at the time where I was like in a, um, a a cheap little apartment here in Beijing, yeah, making almost nothing as a teacher at the Beijing Film Academy, yeah, and then being flown first class to these five star hotels sure. to speak at this, and you know, and then back. Um, so it was this weird kind of you know dual. This existence. is pre when pre uh... actually it wasn't pre when when factors into this story. Oh, okay, she's, okay, she's okay, coming okay, up okay, soon. Okay, cool. So but I, it's pre kids. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, pre, uh, definitely pre kids. Level There's, of yeah, prosperity. I don't, I don't live this way anyway. I'm Got glad it. the austerity program kicked in because uh, Saved I your couldn't. Liver. Yeah, I couldn't participate. I, I wake up face down on my bed. I'm in. I'm, I'm fully clothed in my suit. Okay. And I look over on the, uh, the dresser. Yeah. And there's a gigantic Chinese sword, like this ornamental <laughs> Chinese sword with a big tassel on the handle, okay. et cetera. And then my digital camera. This is back in this, – this dates this story. This right, is back when right. people had little digital sure. cameras, right? And I was like, what the – and I, oh, I get up and, I, and my head is just like dum, 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 dum. I go over, I'm looking at the sword and I look at the camera. I pick up the camera. It's like, remember at the end of The Hangover, the movie? Where they're looking back on the photos. Oh, to see things. what happened. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. see what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's this series of... So there's me drinking with the, the folks, yeah. right? Then there's the uh, one of the regional leaders presenting me with the sword. Oh, that is, okay. You know, All right. Okay. Unbi- so you didn't steal it off the wall no, in the lobby. Steal, I didn't take it from anybody. Okay. It's not like a North <laughs> Korea kind of thing where right. I, I swiped the oh, sword. He's, he's presenting it to me and I'm like, oh. Then there's a photo of him brandishing it. He's he's whipped what? it out of the scabbard, and I'm looking up at it. And then there's another photo. He's swinging it just like an inch above my head. Why? And his face. He's not even focused. His eyes are like thousand yards. He's like straight. blasted. And I'm I'm laughing hysterically. It's like ha <laughs> ha as this thing just poof right above my head. Then there's a photo of me being carried by my arms and legs by four <laughs> four guys in suits. Being like carried out. Carrying me out. Down and somebody the way. thought to take pictures with your camera. My my wife. <laughs> <laughs> my my eventual wife. Oh, so Wen okay. and I were not actually uh, even dating at the oh, time. Oh my god. But I, I guess this is what it Oh, she was in the meeting. Though. She was there and she she didn't she managed to walk back. She drank as much as I she drank more than I did because wow. she kept going. She walked back. She, uh, so you're yeah. carry, being carried out by like four guys. And, and while suits. she's photographing everything, That's right? Great. So, so after this, I was like, okay, this has got to stop. I just can't handle this anymore. But as you know, you can't really refuse to drink. You need now to that go. Now they know you drink. Now that they know you drink. You should have said, ah, I'm a yeah. recovering alcoholic. I can't drink. If, yeah, if in China, if you, because I want to have guests over too, there was a couple times where we had a person who was a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. And I would tell, I would warn the host. I said, okay, look, he cannot drink. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, no, he can't. And like, okay, got it. They, 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 there is an understanding. Sure, sure. Here, and they, all right. So to be clear. And so, and they may still, and I will tell him, they may still offer you anyway because they, but you can say no and they, they won't force you and yeah, just yeah. have juice or what have you. Sure. Sure. Um, and, and that's cool. Yeah, you can do all the toasting, but just have juice or tea or water or something. But they've seen me drink, so I have yeah, to. Yeah, you got no excuses. And unless you're wined and dined, you know, to the gills, you, you can't be released from the, from the event. Sure, sure. So, uh, they haven't done their job if you're not fully. Fully whelmed. My father-in-law tried to give me, he's a, a, a politician, used to be a politician, and he tried to give me his tips about like, you know, pretending to drink it, but holding it in your mouth and then spitting it into your juice when you're yeah. done. Or the, not, I always got caught. I, I wasn't. <laughs> Somebody skilled. would bust you. <laughs> I got busted. All I wasn't that oh, that man. suave, right? Okay. So, but what I did found worked is this: um, I would pretend to be drunk. Uh-huh. I, this only works. You have to have a few drinks to actually yeah. have this be convincing. Yeah. I would look for the smallest government official I could find. Okay. And then I would come up to him, and I would put my arm around him, and then I would just lean all my weight down on him and speak as fast as I could in English into his ear. Yeah. And this guy would just be like, like, hey, hey, you know, get this. He's done. Wow. We're good. Okay. You know, and he was like, all righty. And then I was back in my hotel room. Kevin right. Geiger, make Done, friends. yeah. So Sweet. that was uh, – that was the, and that got me through many, uh, many a banquet uh-huh. where I just like, I gotta, you know, I gotta get out of here with you my wits escape, about me. Escape valve. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess on a more serious note, the, the negotiation. Yeah. Talk about that a bit. I know we've got about nine minutes before you turn into a pumpkin. So I yes. want, I want to get some of your, your ticks on this here. Right. So a little more, I guess, some substantive, we, we say, say the substantive part for the very, so very the two end. of you who are still listening, yeah, nobody, this yeah. is for you. <laughs> Take it to heart. So. Um, I've, I've been through a number of negotiations here in China, just in, in my involvement with the animation business, et cetera. And I've had, you know, just like in the U S I, I guess I've had my wins and my losses, uh, but I, I've learned uh, quite a bit. And I, I think that everything that, uh, Ying was talking about is completely true in, in the episode that you guys had. 
and about about negotiating, about negotiating and, and understanding, you know, the, and, and including the, both of the styles, right? Right. There's like the Tai Chi style. Exactly. Then uh, there's like the Art of War. Wow, it's you like, really do. Let's get you're taking notes. And I, stuff. I did actually it's listen. Awesome. I'm not just polishing your knob. And and you were like, well, aren't these two different opposing styles? And you, yes, yeah. yeah, we're gonna get yeah. <laughs> and she's so, like, yeah, I didn't say they were compatible. I yeah, said they, both, they exist. both exist, yeah. which is very China. So, yeah. um, the uh, but in terms of but on that note, yeah, I think that it's a mistake for foreigners to come here and try to negotiate in the Chinese style. You need to understand it. But what I've found has always been successful for me is to play the Laowai card. Yeah, yeah. And the equivalent to this in Japan is the Gaijin card. I'm probably oh. pronouncing that wrong. Where you're, you're never, as, as local as you try to be, you're never going to be local. Exactly. You're never exactly. going to be one of the guys, right, or one of the girls. You're always going to be a foreigner. And you can play this to your advantage. That's like the one advantage you actually have. Yeah. Is that you are obviously a foreigner. So. And playing the game that, that is not your native game puts you at a disadvantage totally. immediately. Totally. Right? You're playing by the other team's rules. You're always the away team here. Yeah. Right. So you you need to understand those rules and then navigate them in maybe a, a less expected way. And of course, okay. a good Chinese on the other side of the table will be expecting you to do this. So right. you, know, you see, this is where it gets fun. Sure. Um, but uh, if you play the game straight, you're at a disadvantage. So there, I mentioned uh, that there are, uh, earlier I was saying that there are a couple Chinese I see as weaknesses. Okay. And again, this might yeah, sound yeah. uncharitable. No, it's okay, but, but go ahead. Uh, dude. We're gonna, so we talk about this in, in later shows. We actually have one recorded about this. I'm not going to spoil your reveal because I've got we're looking at shared notes, folks. Yeah, we actually have a whole episode on this that comes out like week uh, week seven. Because we we reordered some things, yeah. and that and that's one of our biggest, deepest ones, actually. But what do you see as weaknesses that could well, be? Well, and I, I should advantage? I should give a caveat too that any Chinese person who's listening to this, including Ying Ying right behind me, yeah, talk, she's listening. She's a like a foreigner talking about attention. Chinese weaknesses. Like you know what the foreign weaknesses? Thinking they understand what the hell is going uh, on in China. <laughs> this is true. This but is true. you know what? I'm yeah, gonna go so for it. So lay them out here, buddy. Uh, so two things I see as weaknesses in China: face and propriety. So the obsession with face is not unique to China. Hollywood is full of face, right? And making sure people have their respect and so on. But that also is a weakness. As is the Italian mob. Italian, you know, it's 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 ubiquitous. As is my Italian friends in general, which is so no offense. I think it's it's something that's just part of the human condition. But when people make too much of that, you can use that to your advantage. Yeah. And uh, what I mean is that if you're in a situation where you know that something will be embarrassing to somebody. I'm not saying embarrass them. That's the that's the sure, worst thing to sure, do. Sure, it's sure, over. Exactly. But you know that they're going to steer away from the thing that's going to make them feel embarrassed. Whether you're in the middle of negotiating a deal or right. after you've negotiated, if let's say they're not doing something you think they should be doing according to the contract you've signed, you can use the fact that they would be embarrassed if it were to come to light that da 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 that uh, you know you can kind of get them to do the right thing whether they want to or not, just based on their own sense of personal. Uh, embarrassment. And I can get into a little bit more about that when I talk about like what to do if, if somebody breaks the deal. Sure, sure, please. Uh, or you think they're breaking please, the deal. Please, absolutely. Yeah, you, you give me some good counsel, although it was a little after, it was horses already out of the barn or whatever the metaphor is, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. For uh, regarding propriety, um, Ying Ying said something. Uh, it's part of I, part of your one of the things you guys will do is you'll say something off color, and then Ying Ying <laughs> will say, "You said it, not me." Right. Or uh, you know, I have no official comment. Right. Um, this this is a very Chinese thing to say. Sure, sure. Right. Uh, you said it, not me. Uh, I'm shocked and have no official comment. Oh, um, and it's done humorously, but really, there's a seriousness behind it. Totally, that totally. It's not, people, it's not unintentional, by the way. People in China we, don't want to cross a line, and there are many right, lines. Right. So here again... Yeah, I want the freedom to say my thing, but I also don't want to paint her with my brush. Right, yeah. and also the you know in China there are things you can't say. Uh, or you could say, but you'll, there'll be repercussions if you right. say them. So, right. um, And it's not like you know people sometimes think, like my dad uh, said once, like, well, if you say the wrong thing, will you get like, will they take you away? Or I said, no, but you'll just find that I'm stuff... I'm not Chinese, they won't do that. Stuff just stops happening for you. Right. If you if you, oh, yeah. uh, you say the wrong thing, either enough times or you say one really big wrong thing, yeah. or you embarrass the wrong person, you stuff just stops. And this is not just for foreigners, but anybody in sure, China. It's not sure. like you're thrown into a gulag, but st- you stop getting the phone calls, you stop mm. getting invited to things. Opportunities just dry up. It, just like in Hollywood, the phone stops ringing. Absolutely. Say, right? So this is the the main consequence. But the issue of uh, um, propriety. 
as a Lawai. Yeah, how can you? What you can, what it, what is it for people who aren't tracking this yet? And how does it? How can you play? You can game play this. So my my colleagues, yeah. I, as you know, for Magic Dumpling, I have two Chinese partners, one of whom is my wife, who uh, we formed the company with, and we would go into meetings oftentimes where we would have a pregame. And maybe we were negotiating something with them by paper, and suddenly we we're there to like really hammer out something we're stuck on. Right. And there's something that we wanted to bring up, but we knew it was not polite. So I'd say, okay, but I'm going to. But it needed to be right. I'm going to bring this up. Yeah. You guys are going to apologize. Oh, sorry. There goes our American again. Yeah, you know, that's, it can't that's control what's out of his mouth. But yeah. then it's on the table. Yeah. And even if they don't reply to it, you can see. The body language, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. there's always, when you're negotiating with people in China, you'll see there's, there's never one person, right? There's always like a row of people. Sure, sure. So there's the main person, chamber. the person who's doing the most talking usually is the number two or three person, usually right. number two. Right. The big, big boss, if he's there or listening, she's there, listening, listening, is listening. sitting there just going through their phone, seemingly not paying attention. And then when there's something that really kept, they think they're suddenly there, that's yeah. the big boss. Yeah. Then you'll have a assistant or two. Somebody's usually typing, taking notes, not saying anything. There might be a, a lesser ranking person who might ask the impertinent question from the Chinese side. Exactly. Yeah. So right. you, you figure all this There's out. There's the guy getting the tea. But you can, the person getting the tea, exactly. But, you know, you have to do the this. The guy throwing with, cigarettes across throwing the Throwing cigarettes, exactly. You need to do this with good humor and they need to like you. If you're an asshole yeah. in the room, yeah. this won't work. But if you're likable and you've got a sense of humor about it, but you throw out the impertinent question here or there as the foreigner, and then your, your Chinese colleagues, like, oh, you know, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. This can be a way to loosen the room up, to get something to come, to kind of tease out what actually is going on. Right, it, right. It, again, you can't take this too far, but it is something that we've used to to just get somewhere. When you're really stuck, yeah. this, this can be a way to kind of break things loose. And, and that's a conversational tactic that I, I mean, I'm not consciously, you know, gaming this, but this my own style of, yeah. I, I mean, if I have to raise something or I want to raise something that's a little tricky, I mean, yeah. I've got to do with humor. And, 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 and I think well, that's natural. I feel it. I mean, I feel anywhere. the need. Hollywood's the I feel same the way, need right? to like take the sting out of it by either me being the idiot asking and I'm acknowledging that or whatever. So right. So and and, and you really had um, you had a great thing. There was the the issue where um, where I got screwed out of some money, which never uh, happens. Which never you. never happens. Uh, how never. Did, how that, that last payment? Well, they always. <laughs> I had somebody tell me. I had a lawyer tell me years ago. Beware of step deals. Here. Yeah, because that last step, you're, ne- you're never, you're never gonna, gonna see it. Once they got the thing, once you got the candy, you're never gonna. And get many, it. many Chinese uh, colleagues, people working the business, have admitted to me that they know that the Chinese people here working with figure, okay, you should know you're not gonna get the last payment. So if you're too stupid, yeah, to make, factor that into make that the as previous small as payments, possible, exactly. You know, then you know you deserve what you. I get made it as small as possible, get. but it's not small. It's like three months worth of cash and prizes here, for me. So. Yeah. You, the, the, you guys really encapsulated very well, and I'll make this as pithy as I can because I know we're, we're uh, closing out here. Um, you, you were very, you were very uh, smart about how you encapsulated the American approach to contracts, like hammering every little freaking right, right, detail right. out, and then heaven help you if you break even one sure, of these. Sure, sure. And then the Chinese, where the contract's like a starting point. Right. Right, you think it's the end, but it's oh, that's just the yeah. It's a philosophical know. framework, but it ain't, philosophical it ain't the law. Philosophical framework, it ain't, it ain't actually the law. So. Um, when, when something happens or doesn't happen, whether it's a term not being met or like, like maybe you're supposed to get screen credit and you don't, or there's that payment, the the last payment, especially the earlier payments, you can just kind of slow down the work and you can control it that way. But that last payment, which oftentimes doesn't come through, right? what do you do? And you, yeah, what, what do you do? (laughs) Well, one thing, and I've been in Chinese court, uh, before not, I wasn't brought there, uh, cause there's somebody that's good, but I've, but I've been, in the, I've seen how it works. It's not intended for foreigners, um, or for your benefit, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's really intended. I think there's a presumption of guilt if you're. Well, and just for, just for little anyway, legal right? things like, okay, Hey, let, let's say that a person who is an assistant sues because they feel they were owed something by their boss. The judge usually, well, Hey, can. Can this person just be paid this kind of money and just get this out of here? Yeah, and yeah they want to right? expedite it. Yeah. Uh, the out of court settlement. I mean, it's something Westerners are familiar exactly. with. Exactly. It's very, very common. In the but something bigger, you're, you're not going to go into the court system because uh, it's not meant for you. You don't have the money or the resources to really navigate it well. And it's not going to turn out in your favor. And quite frankly, in, in uh, Hollywood, this is used the same way companies like, I'll say, Disney, because I used to work for them. There were so many things in a Disney contract that were frankly illegal. I used to work for the union. I was a union shop steward when I was at Disney. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So I know that were 
contravening California state law. But they were nonetheless. But they, they were knew there. you would never go into court, and because they had deeper pockets, you're okay. You're not, you know, because you're owed three thousand or whatever because of this overtime. You're not going to go to court, and and you know you're just going to eat it. And that's and, that. Di- and Disney was known for having my not not tangent because you're trying to wrap it up. Uh, let me get this licking. Is that Disney is known for being the most litigious uh, of the major companies, and actually, the my one of my attorney friends who specializes a lot in IP and copyright, you know, basically started off this course that I took with him, which is how I got to know him years ago. Which is the history of copyright in the U.S. is the history of the Disney Corporation. Yes, and protecting Mickey Mouse exactly. from becoming public Mickey. domain right, right, and right. changing law. But to- it's but it's not just history. It actually extends to the present day, and I used to have offices at where, 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 where Shamrock Partners is. They're there behind the smokehouse, which is the Disney yeah. Airs, right? Yeah. And really fancy private offices that I'm telling tales out of school. But No, no, but, it's okay. But, that's, we, but that's, that's where the family offices for the Disney Airs, for mo- many of them were. I'm, so I'm I, almost going to go on a tangent I'm about very, the... the – Okay, please I'm, No, but I won't. I won't. I need to wrap it up. You're the one with I'll, the hard outs. So I'll – uh, yeah, I'll uh, – So, 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 so this, the point is Disney doesn't screw around in terms of contracts, is getting us back to the – They they, the they don't screw around, but Disney will, for example – and I shouldn't just say Disney, but many companies, that last payment, you'll get it, but they may take their good old time and they'll say, oh, it's it's in process, right? Yeah. And uh, it's in the approval process. They'll stretch it to so the forth. legal limit of what to they the can To the legal limit of what they can. And oftentimes companies will end up going bankrupt waiting for that. You, you know, this happens where people, sure. smaller companies who live kind of like payment yeah, to payment. Exactly. It's like, look, for you guys, it may not be a big deal, but we really need yeah, that bridge money. Yeah, this is our third quarter. Yeah. 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 Um, so in China, uh, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the last payment. One thing you can do, one thing you really need, I, I mentioned the importance of Chinese wingmen in the room, right? When you're negotiating exactly. to kind of apologize for you or to talk you off the ledge sure, when you really sure, had it. Like, sure. I don't know what's going on and they explain things to you. You also need Chinese benefactors. Right. Where you where you can use the face and the guanxi to your benefit yes. to help you get, get what's owed. The best thing you can have cultivated in China, and this is where you really have to be here, is somebody who is as high ranking as possible in your field or somewhere in government is even better, who likes you a lot. Yeah. You've never asked them for anything, but they understand you and like you. And, yeah. and you've maybe bought them a nice, you know, uh, uh, Chinese New Year gift uh, occasionally just to spin the plate. Um, but they're also respected and or feared by the people you're dealing with. Right. So if that person were to find out that you're being screwed around with, yeah, be they, they're not going to come down like a hammer, but they might just, hey, so uh, what's going on with, you know, and just even that question being asked, uh-huh. that eye being put on the business yep. of the people you're yep. dealing with would freak them out enough that they're like, you know what, we can, here's, here's what, it was just, you know, it was in process. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And uh, this is something that I've utilized. You've had that magic to materialize that, like, cough up that. Last yeah, you know, just you know, like, sorry, like it's, you know, it's, it, there was a delay, and the guy was on vacation, and he sure, back and sure, he approved sure. it. So here you go. Um, and I've I've utilized that I we my company two or three times in the last ten years uh, to get us out of some situations where you know something that was owed to us just wasn't being honored. Right. And um, then of course you know when you play those cards, you have to make sure that you do something to pay that person back. I don't mean monetarily. But I understand. They'll call in a favor too at some point. Right. Usually, hey, can you design a logo for my son's new mm-hmm. startup? Sure. Um, you know, I give him ten logos. But uh, that benefactor, that that patron, if you will, it's not yeah. a monetary patron, but that person who's looking out for you, who likes you, yeah. who is covering your ass, basically, is essential here uh, in China for uh, for pretty much every situation. Awesome. Well, Kevin's hell an episode, man. Yeah, I know we were skidding around, but I tried to bring it to something germane at the end. There, <laughs> I like it. You, it's, well, well, the the the, the you know the, the people who stuck with it actually will really have gotten some nice germane advice. I think I can it, imagine that. Like, oh, you really, the last two minutes. You, that's you just when jump, you're going to give us the goal. To the- <laughs> you're going to ramble, ramble about your hairballs and cremated cats. That's right. And, they dragged yeah. us, and then when they went to coyotes, I was like, okay, I'm oh, geez, out. Okay, I'm checking out. Jesus. Dude, uh, well, look, I'm looking forward. So this drops, as the kids say, on Friday. I will have just enjoyed, I'm sure, a lovely Thanksgiving meal at your home. So thank you for Thanksgiving. It was great. Happy to have you over. I'm sorry I drank too much, and I apologize about the dining room table. But This is cool. It's all sort of like my my, my brain is exploding right now. I'm having to time travel. So that was a great Thanksgiving dinner we had yesterday, but I haven't had yet. And, dude. And, uh, you know, that 1,000 RMB bottle of wine you brought was just fantastic. You're totally in an, an alternate reality. 
reality right now. <laughs> I love it. Dude, thanks so much, man. We'll have to do this again because we said we would. That's right. In December. <laughs> All right, brother. Thanks, man. Right. Okay.